everything has to be a, a, a Mardi Gras preach. Right. <laughs> Sometimes just standing holding the sign is what we need to do. And so I, I brought a treat this year, and uh, I've never really uh, taught this or gave you guys some testimony on this. This is, uh, if you ever watched any of the football games, you saw a John 316 oh. sign. I'm one of the guys. There's four of us that used to do this. That's a long time ago. And I'm one of the guys. This is one of the original signs <laughs> that we used to float. This is what you'd see in a moon zone. Turn around, Rooks. Turn around. <laughs> I'm gonna get a picture of it too. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it hanging. Oh yeah. This is one of the original signs. People tell us, uh, you guys don't preach John 3:16. I probably promoted John 3:16 more than you will ever know. And like Pastor David said, there's gonna be some events we go to that these are the signs. These are the things that we used to go to. The amount of people. And I'm going to share some stories with you guys. You think it's just unique to hold the sign. I'm going to share some stories of what we had to go through to put these signs in. It would blow you away. Because we don't really talk about this. Mostly it's just the hardcore preaching. But there's times where just holding a sign is more than enough. You know? Uh, do we even hear the voice of God if that's all we're supposed to do? And so, when I get told, hey, I don't preach enough John 3.16, <laughs> I look at that individual, you have no idea. That's right. You absolutely have no idea. Right. So this is one of the original signs. Wow. Right here. Wow. That's crazy. And I'll give some testimony of it tomorrow night. I'll have it hanging. And I'm going to run some stuff down that you would be blown away that we had to go through. When we hang this stuff, it's not just showing up and popping these things up. And so there were four of us that did it. Now I'm one of the guys. So if, if it's going knocking on doors, I'll do it. It's not a problem. If it's just passing out tracks, it's not a problem. Not everything has to be an in-your-face preach. Sometimes it's just holding up a song. Right. It's up and <laughs> you're going to hear some stories I've really never run this thing down, so you'll be the first. And uh, what what great testimonies that we've had just with a sign. I'm in my garage the other day, and I'm thinking, you know, all the time we get told we don't preach John 3.16. We don't preach enough love. Well, this might be a shock to some of you, but uh, I'm one of the guys that did hang John 3.16 signs at football games, Laker games, uh, basketball games, uh, golf tournaments, you name it. There was a sporting event, we'd go out there. I wish my testimony could be that I would go to these stadiums and say, in Jesus' name, I'm going to walk in and hang that sign. No, I, it doesn't work that way. I'm going to give you a little bit of what we had to do to hang this song. Praise the Lord. And it's not simple as, I'm going to rebuke everybody in Jesus' name and I'm going to hang this song. This is a little bit more like the Apostle Paul, who they wanted to kill him. That's right. And he didn't say, I'm going to bind everybody in Jesus', Jesus name and just walk out that door. Amen. They let him out at night in a basket over a wall. That's Christianity. <laughs> and so when I give a little bit of rundown of what we had to do on these signs, and you can tell this one's been through rain, it's been through some cold weather, and it's only, it's, it's, it's put this way for a reason. You've got this section here, because when I hang it, I am fist fighting and pulling. And I'm giving the heathen a little bit more here so they don't mess up this letter. So you see it on TV. Wow. And so this is done by design. Wow. I know I look like a biker and I'm an absolute idiot. But <laughs> things are done for design. <laughs> so how do we put these signs up? It costs money. I didn't go to every game. I went to the big football games. Monday night football. Uh, the playoff games. 
one Super Bowl, talk about a lot of money to get into these games. Right. The blessing is, I live in Los Angeles, and I get to know scalpers. Uh. Scalpers are my friends. Mm -hmm. Wow. Boy, you might see me walking and talking to a scalper, a drug addict. And I'm talking to him for a reason. Because you know what? Scalpers back in the day used to sell phony tickets. I don't want to get in that seat. I just need to get in that stadium. And the scalpers would give me tickets so I can go. I know these guys personally. Wow. They'd say, man, it's a bad day. We're not selling any tickets. We're trying to sell these tickets to the game. $3,500. We can't sell it. So I did the prosperity thing. Hey. You know what I'm doing? Bless me, right. and God will bless you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was yeah. 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 Bless me with a ticket, and God's going to bless you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, hey, then I'll do that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I had to get into the stadium first. I wish my story was I just <laughs> bind everybody and walked into the stadium. Yeah. The work that we had to do to get into this, to get a ticket. And sometimes we couldn't get a ticket. Sometimes I'd have a $20 bill and maybe $20 in singles, and I'd wrap it up and I'd put it in my pocket, and I'm walking around trying to read the ticket guys, and I'd look at a guy, and I'd just walk in, give him the cash, he'd press the button, I'd walk in. Never made eye contact. Wow. I'm in the stadium. I had to get in the stadium. Wow. And in order for me to get in the stadium, I had at least two signs, sometimes three. And they were inside the sleeves of a jacket that I had in my, uh, in my arm. So I had a jacket with these signs in there. And I finally get into the stadium. And I had to go to a particular end zone. We had to study the stadium. Because back then, when you kicked the field goal... The field goal either came into the camera or it went into the crowd. I had to find out which stadium the camera goes into the crowd. Because that's where this is. Otherwise, you wouldn't see them. So we had to memorize all these different stadiums. We had to know where the camera shots were. Wow. There was a lot of study. We just don't go there and, Lord, lead me. <laughs> I wish I could say that, but I don't. So we had to study and figure out where the cameras are. And now I'm in. And now i got to get to that area. Mm. So big game. This is a, a sellout crowd. There's no empty seats. This is a playoff game. This is a Monday night football game. This is a world championship game. And so, and based on the stadium, you had tunnels. And you had guys who want to see that ticket. They won't let you in unless you've got a ticket. So what do I do? I can't say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> I wish I could say it. But you know what I had to do? I had to walk in with some guys that I had no idea who they were and act like we're buddies and pals. If the Packers were playing and they had Packers shirts on, oh, the Packers are going to take it. Oh, yeah. And I'm walking in with these guys, and they're, the guy's asking for tickets. Everybody's got the ticket. I don't have a ticket, but he knows I was with those guys. And he says, where's your ticket? Uh, John's got my ticket. Hey, John, ticket. I'll get it. And the guy just lets me go. Wow. I'm, in. I'm inside. The first tunnel. i got to go now because this is like field 11. So now there's another guy. <laughs> And so this other group may be a Raider group. Oh, I'm talking Raiders. We're going to wipe these guys. My intention is to put this sign up. Yeah. I don't care how I do It's like smuggling Bibles in the church. <laughs> I need to get this in there. And so I'm walking in with Raiders, and we're talking and doing all kinds of stuff. I slip past the second guy. Wow. I'm in there. The problem is I can't sit anywhere. And I'm going to be putting this sign, and i got to run up the stairs after I hang the sign up, and then run back down when they're going to kick another field goal, or an end zone. 
And how I do that is I have to go back up, and that guy at the tunnel has to memorize my face. Out of all the people that's coming in, he has to memorize my face. And so as I'm walking back up, I'm telling this guy, hey, i got to go get me a beer. You want me to get your beer? I'll get you a beer. And he's looking at me, and we're laughing. And uh, so now he's got my face. So when I come back, he's not going to ask me for the ticket again, because he knows I'm going to get him a beer, which I don't get him a beer, because when I see him, I said, hey, I forgot your beer. I'll bring it next time. Yeah, come on in. I go to the next guy, and I say, hey, look, i got to go to the bathroom. Man, this beer is horrible. When I come back, I'll bring you a girl. What do you want? Blonde, redhead, brunette? I want a blonde. Okay, you got it. So when I come back, hey, he's got my face memorized. He doesn't tell me anything. Come on in. Like I said, I know what I did. My motive is this. i got to get this up here. And so... Uh, what we have to do is we have these little portable cameras and we're watching the game outside, outside the tunnels. So when I see they're getting near the end zone, I gotta go. I gotta go get to work. Got my jacket, got the signs inside. Now I gotta pass by those two tunnel guys. Hey, I forgot the beer, man. I'm sorry. That's okay. Come on in. Great. Don't have to worry about it. Next guy, hey, I forgot the blonde. She saw your face and she didn't want to come. I'll try next time. Yeah, no problem. Come on in. No tickets. I don't have to show anything. I'm halfway there. And then it's time to put this. Timing is right. you got to watch this. Because you're looking at the game. And when they snap the ball, that's when this sign has to go up. And when that sign goes up, you just put it up, you block everybody behind you, they're angry, they're pushing you, and when you do this, you punch somebody in the face by accident. You knock a beer over. You drop somebody's hot dog. But the guy on TV, he sees the sign. Yeah. It looks nice, lovely, oh, what a nice message. But what we had to do to put signs like this on games, is amazing. Yes. And God opened it up. It got to the point where some of these uh, big games, it costs millions of dollars that the NFL said for advertising. And they concluded this was free advertising. There are certain stadiums where the, uh, the sideline fence, you can use to hang old signs of certain teams and numbers and players and homemade signs. So we had signs that were lasting real long that we'd get there early and put those signs in. <coughs> For the end zone, this was one of the signs that we did. Wow. And so uh, we did push John 316, probably more than most people will ever know. Yeah. yeah. We used to do a lot, go to the Laker games, go to anything that was big. One time, we had the PGA golf, and I thought, might as well do golf. But golf, we couldn't do things like this. Golf, we had to uh, wear our Christian clothing, and I'll get to that. But, uh, you know, we had to buy tickets to get inside there. And then we had to figure out the camera angle, which you're watching it on TV years before, months before, and you're studying everything. You're looking at everything. You're looking at per particular things that are standing out that you need to see where that camera goes. And that's where you need to go. you need got to do your homework. You just can't walk in. And unfortunately, at a golf event, we have to stand in the front row, which it's very difficult to go to the front row when you've got hundreds of people watching this guy hit this white ball. But in golf... They have this little sign, and it says quiet, which means everybody needs to hush because this guy's going to hit the ball. Be it a putt or a hit, he's going to smack this ball. And that was my time to muscle my way in. <laughs> and when people would say, hey, oh, hey, shh, I'd point to the sign. <laughs> I had to negotiate to do it. I wish I could say, I rebuke you all in Jesus. And like the... Uh, 
the oceans, they just spread open and I was able to walk in there. I don't have that testimony. What can I say? I did what I could and I did. It took me about three tries. Now, I'm right at the front. I see the camera. I know the lights. I got the angle. I've watched it a hundred times. I see how when I need to do it. And what I've got is a t-shirt that's probably 6X. And it's got a John 3.16 on it. And I take off my jacket and I do this. <laughs> that's what I do. It's there. And so uh, we get in a few times. Praise God, it's there. And uh, I, I always have different colored shirts with me. I mean, my jacket had so many things in there. Because I take off my shirt, I put on a blue shirt. Because police and golf and security, they're looking for a guy with a blue shirt. I've now got a green shirt. And when the next guy hits, I take it off and I do this. <laughs> Disappear in the crowd, take off my shirt, put on another shirt, and now they're looking for the guy with the blue shirt, but now I've got an orange shirt. I mean, it's going to take a lot to catch me, man. I want to do this. I don't care how, I'm going to figure out a way on how to put this sign up. Yeah. Yes. So, oh. finally, the Gulf police spot me. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you have been arrested by Gulf police? <laughs> well, there's a little golf cart that I got put in, a little squad light, and uh, yeah, I'm going to Gulf jail. <laughs> Jail. So I'm in the back of the golf court, and they're scolding me. We don't put anything religious, anything political, anybody that has any emblem on that sign, network, blots it out. And you keep going there. And you deliberately went there and changed clothes. And you're in trouble. And so I said, you know, I, I paid uh, $220 for the ticket. It's there. Yeah. You know, it's my ticket. Nobody said nothing. I couldn't do this. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I'm, I'm negotiating with the uh, golf police. They're <laughs> me to go to jail. And they decided to say, okay, we'll give you your money back if you leave. Well. And I said, yeah, I don't think I'll do that. Uh -huh. I said, well, we'll get somebody from the PGA and verify and give you your cash. We'll just drop you off right here while we go get them. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> they drop me off at the clubhouse. Wow. And there's tons of people. Uh, and I'm a street preacher. Yeah. They're walking around drinking their margaritas or Mai Tais, whatever they do. And uh, I'm thinking, wow, this is great. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'll take it from here. <laughs> well, I don't know much about golf. I play football, but I don't know much about golf. If I'm going to play sports or watch sports, it's got to be something physical, a good boxing match, you know, a good uh, football game where somebody gets something knocked out or broken. Yeah. Yeah. Golf is like, uh, you know, synchronized swimming. That's nothing for me. But I do know, what little I do know, that if you yell for... During a golf game, that means somebody might get hit with a stray ball. Yeah. So when you yell four, you get everyone's attention. <laughs> I'm not a genius. I, you know, photo finished high school. I'm not the smartest guy, but I can work with what I've got. Okay, four. So I stand there and yell. Four! Man, everyone stopped and stared. Every Bible verse that I can think of with the word four, I finished. The wages of sin is death. Four! God so loved it. Every verse that I can think of with the word four came out that day. And I just walked around the clubhouse and continued to have four and quote a Bible verse. Here comes the Gulf police. You gotta get out. 
you got to go. I said, fine. So they actually uh, sent me out, gave me my cash, and they gave me my old ticket. So I went right to the scalpers and I said, hey, I paid 25, give me 75, it's yours. Yeah. They gave me 75 bucks. So I was able to go in for free, made 75 bucks, Come on, and I was able to put some John 316 <laughs> Our hope was wow. that people would read this and get saved. You just had just four to five seconds yeah. to hang this sign. And these signs were worldwide. People knew. Man, they saw John 3.16, that was it. We actually started using John 3.3. 3. We started using Hebrews 9.27. Uh, we started using Jesus saves. We started to use no Bible. But it all started with the John 3.16. Even with just a few seconds on that TV, some of you might have even seen it. Uh, yes. It impacts me. I saw it many times. I saw times. it many yeah. times. Yeah. It's there. And my hope was, man, as I'm in there struggling and you guys have no idea, I had to lie my way to get in there that tunnel to hang that sign that at that party where everyone's drinking and eating popcorn, that somebody's going to say, I'm going to look up that verse. I'm going to find out what that verse is. Out of curiosity. Yeah. I have no idea how many people it influenced. We have no idea what happened. But we do know it was, uh, it was known at games. You went to a game, it was there. And so uh, uh, the struggle was there to go. A very expensive very expensive hobby to go. My neighbors, when I first moved in, I've asked my neighbors, hey, look, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. Uh, can you feed my dog, pick up my mail? I gotta be at the Super Bowl. Oh, man, what a guy. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fly over here to the Monday night game. Can you just uh, take care of the house? Oh, man, that isn't something. It wasn't until a while later they saw me in the news and they kind of connected the dots why I was going. <laughs> But this was the signs that we used. They had to be sheets because they had to fold and go inside of our sleeves. And uh, oftentimes the police would uh, take some of these signs. Sometimes they would scold you depending on the stadium. One time the officer said, if I see you with that sign again, I'm not only going to kick you out, I'm going to throw you in jail. Fine. Wow. So I pulled out another sign out of my sleeve and I hung it. Of course, he came over and he's arguing with me. And I said, but you said it was a John 3, 16 sign. <laughs> I, I raised a John 3, 3 sign. Yeah. You didn't say the sign in particular. I thought you just didn't like John 3, 3 sign. <laughs> It's amazing what God can give you. Amen. And you use whatever you possibly can do. I do understand this. So signs like this, uh, what a blessing. I only got a few more because uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, we, don't, we can't use these anymore. Now uh, the uh, cameras are on some type of a, a wire. Wire, wire. Yeah. And you can't really do this. And the sidelines have nothing but advertisement from, uh, you know, big companies. Sponsors. So you can't really hang stuff anymore. Right. But back in the day, I'm glad I took advantage of it. Amen. Uh, I don't know much about sports, you know, other than a little football. We did the uh, World Cup when it was in Pasadena. And so uh, they did allow us to put some signs, and it was two Latin groups, teams, and so on, putting the signs in Spanish. I don't know anything about soccer, but uh, I can hear the people say, play, play. Some guy, some soccer guy named Pelé. And uh, he got a chance to walk by the sign, and I had a chance to, uh, to get his attention and say something to him about Jesus Christ. During the Laker games, we'd have to have small signs. By the time they popped open, they were about the size of the signs that, uh, that you were, or that you use. But they were real thin, because they had to go inside of our shirt. And then we had to go all the way down to the court. Like I said, we had to get their attention. We had no ticket. You can't go there. 
And when the game came that way, we popped out the sign, opened it up, and there we were. Yeah. And uh, once it was gone, you can see us running because security is coming out. <laughs> so you almost have to time some of these. Sometimes, hey, if you only have one time or two times to fly it, you want to make sure that they're big. Maybe even a game-winning field goal. Some of the old NFL films, you'll still see these songs. Yeah. They're there. You can't remove them. And so uh, it was a time where uh, we could do it, and we can't do it anymore. I'm glad I was able to be used. There were four of us that did it. Kind of like preaching. There may be a time where holding a banner is going to be illegal. That's right. There may be a time where these younger brothers are going to be talking to a group of believers holding one of the banners that we were just flying and saying, do you believe we used to fly something like this? Yeah. It might be illegal one of these days. Um, yeah. The brother that started doing this, his name is Roland Stewart. He had the rainbow wig. And uh, oftentimes I get told, uh, you know, brother, do you believe in this? Do you believe in this conspiracy? Do you believe that uh, this person is a mason? Do you believe... This is one of the reasons why I don't bite that apple. Roland got involved in a lot of conspiracy stuff. In my Christianity, I've seen more people nosedive. Nosedive. When you start getting into the government is after me. Yeah. Roland started getting into a lot of this stuff and he started biting into Jesus is coming. It's last days. The Lord's going to return. And it turned out that he's kind of a loner. Always watch a loner. Guys that work with a team, they're a little bit different. Guys that don't work with anybody, there's probably a good reason. Yeah. And those are the guys that are eventually going to uh, melt down. Right. Roland kept thinking that Jesus Christ is coming back at a particular day. And he had issues. And Roland believed that Jesus Christ was coming back on this particular day so much that he damaged, tried to burn some churches down, tried to do some stuff and provoke it like it was the devil. That's how wild he got. Wow. And then uh, they, they knew it was him. And of course I'm tied into him, so I'm obviously probably going to be watched, my house, but I'm sure they've done it before. And so there was a warrant out for Roland's arrest. And one night at my house, there's a brother, some of you may know, his name is Bob Bible. Bob and I are in my living room and we're arguing Bible, he and I, and somebody bangs on the door, and it's Roland. He walks in the house, and I'm like, Roland, they're after you, buddy. You know, anybody else come in? I mean, you got the FBI looking out for you, you're all over the news. And he says, yeah, I'm going to do something tomorrow because the Lord's coming in two days and i got to warn the world. Wow. And Bob and I looked at each other like, oh boy. No. And but Roland came to my house because back in those days, the cell phones were like a suitcase. And it had a cord with, uh, you know, a headset. And I had those. I mean, I had that set. You know, it was amazing, man. That thing was like 150 bucks a month, and every phone call was like uh, $60 or something. I mean, they didn't really charge you a lot of money. But Roland knew I had this phone, and he says, I need your phone because what I'm going to do, you're going to see in the news tomorrow. And I'm like, brother, you're not taking my phone. I don't even know what you are going to do. And he says, I'll destroy it. There'll be no evidence. I need the phone. And I said, you're not getting the phone. He says, well, you'll see what the Lord's going to do because he's coming back in two days, and i got to warn the world. Wow. We tried to convince him otherwise. But he didn't, he didn't do it. Next day, I'm at work. We're painting an inside of a house, and the lady had the TV on, and there it is. He went to L.A. X. He took over some hotel because everything was so spiritualized. It was on the seventh floor, a particular number of that seventh floor. He had some reading that went in there. The girls were cleaning the room, so when he took the floor, they went into the bathroom. He's instantly hit with kidnapping. He puts up these signs on the window, and then he starts telling everybody, I need to talk to the media, or I'm going to start shooting planes down. Wow. Well, 
He thought he'd get on the news. Unfortunately, they did arrest him. But his story was maybe like on the last page of the newspaper. So God was definitely not involved. Man. Roland did, I think he did, uh, he has three life sentences. On him. And uh, he still writes me all the time. He still believes in certain dates that Jesus Christ is coming again. Wow. And so, uh, you know, everybody has seen these signs. God used him in a very mightily way, and yet he gets caught up in things like this. Man. And it's amazing how many people I know personally that are involved in some weird stuff. You had a guy who was uh, uh, some wacko that was shooting people in some little small town in another state, and some guy was holding a, an abortion sign, and he got shot. Well, you know, for what reason? I don't know. I only bring that up because that police department calls me. Reuben, do you know why this guy would be shot? I said, I don't know who he is. I think he's just a random shooting. He just happened to be there. That's my opinion. But to show you how many wackos I have, yeah, law enforcement knows that I hang around them. There's probably some picture of some wacko that I've uh, been talking to. And they go ballistic. So most of these guys that go off on the deep end are anti-government, conspiracy wackos, uh, you're really a secret mason. When you start biting that apple, yeah. trust me, you get to the point where you don't trust anybody. You think everyone's after you. So in my Christianity, I don't really go there. Most of you know that. I'm even accused of being a government agent. Police always are giving us the good, the good side when we go to town. Uh, I'm, I'm a mason. I get accused of all that stuff. One time we're in a police uh, 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 place in the city, and the chief of police walks over, and he and I are talking. It's a little town. And the cop says, yeah, I know who you are. Yeah, I got you. He says, uh, you're a sting. You, you just want to get our department. He thought I was a cop. The cop thought I was a cop, and I was going after them as a sting to bust his department. Wow. People, when you start getting into conspiracy, it can hurt you. It can bite you. I can't tell you how many guys like Roland ended up in a place like that. Only uh, uh, Roland is blessed that he's doing life in prison. Others have gone into sin and fell away from God because of this stuff. You can get so consumed in sedition. You can get so consumed in thinking the government's after you. I mean, quite frankly, none of us here are really that big Amen. to have the government go after us. Amen. I think point. our government is involved in things, but yeah. you and I, we're not going to be that big of a Amen. Thing. Quite frankly, if the government wanted to stop us, we'd all die yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, uh, this is a little bit of our sign. One of the major things that we did one year was uh, it was the uh, World Series. I think it was San Francisco and Oakland were, were played. And uh, I don't know if you remember this, but there was an earthquake that took place during the game. Yeah. And the stadium shook. If you were watching it on TV, everything went blank. Well, outside the stadium, the cars, the alarms, People were running out of that stadium in a panic. Okay? It's not like a hurricane. You can't dictate an earthquake. One hits, you have no idea if there's another one right behind it. Yep. And when that building, when that when that stadium shook, and those people came hauling out of it. And it was unique because half of me wanted to say, oh, oh we've just been preaching outside this thing. It's going to go down. Some of the, the fear in these people when they were running out of the stadium was off the charts. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, you know, street preaching, everybody knows that. Campus preaching, that's on the books. Everyone knows that. In my lifetime, marketplaces where people go and preach. And sometimes preaching 
may not be what we do. Sometimes it may be just holding the sign like this. And so, uh, however God uses you, I do encourage you uh, to be used. Be it on a sign, uh, preaching with a megaphone, or going someplace. But uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank that, you, uh, brother. It's... <laughs>